gatekeepers. I am Emily Edwin. At Dennis Keton. Yes, guys, it's been long, long, long. Um, it's, it was because of the international breaks, but now we are at international. It's because of the international break, mm -hmm. but now we are back. And uh, remember, in the, we, in, the, in the EPL, we left uh, in game week 12. 12 yeah. We're now back to game week 13. And uh, before we start, anything maybe you say about the international breaks? Uh, we were we were international breaks were nice at least Kenya we played against a team called uh, Seychelles. 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 we won by five goals to eight. Uh, the same same team was thrashed how many goals nine, nine goals, goals to nil by Ivory Coast on the other side uh, Germany mysteriously lost to Turkey by three goals to two and uh, of course Kylian Mbappe's team German no France. Surprised a team called Gibraltar by scoring 14 goals against them, where Mbappe had a brace. Uh, Giroud had no Mbappe had a hat trick. Giroud had a brace. Uh, the team which is surprising many currently is Brazil. Brazil in the con conmebol, they are not performing very well currently. They are position six in the ranking of qualification to the World Cup. So Brazil needs to rise up. Uh, but above everything else. Uh, it's been a fair and a great uh, international break. The only surprise, the only bad thing about it is many players have actually uh, gotten injuries from this international break. But we are happy to announce that some of the injuries which were gotten from there, uh, they are doing well. Somebody like Onana, who had an injury, who had a knock, somebody like uh, Haaland, uh, they are doing well. So let's see how it goes. So Pogba, back to game week 13. Actually, speaking of Alan Haaland, he will be at Etihad tomorrow as Man City will come Liverpool. This one is early kickoff. I don't know why they had to put it early kickoff because on Saturday 25th, Man City against Liverpool will be at exactly 15.30 EAT. And on Sunday, the last game will be Everton against Manchester at 7.30. I think they could have done more over the shuffle. But anyway, Man City will be playing against Liverpool. Now this one, Surprisingly, many of many of you would not think uh, these people that in 52 games they have played, Man City has had only 12 wins, Liverpool 21 wins, and uh, Liverpool has had more home wins uh, compared to Man City who have had 10. Man City has had only two away wins, Liverpool four. So this stats has something to say about this match. So Man City against Liverpool. Uh, as we jump to this game. So uh, let's first of all tell you how the matches fared last season. Last season, uh, both teams won their home games. Uh, Man City won by 4-1 at Etihad. On the other hand, Liverpool won by one goal at uh, Anfield. So clearly this match has always been... Uh, this, this is a fixture which, number one, you need to know that it's always a fixture which never lacks goals. Uh, we don't get nil-nil in this fixture. Uh, Players always are outgoing and uh, we always get a lot of goals in this fixture. Uh, on the flip side, uh, you find that um, Liverpool have their top scorer is Mohamed Salah currently with 10 Premier League goals. On the flip side, Man City's top scorer is Erling Haaland with 13 Premier League goals. That goes ahead to tell you that the competition is tight in terms of uh, the, the front runners in terms of attack. But uh, Man City also have somebody called Alvarez who has like four or five goals. Then Bernardo Silva also to add to their arsenal. On the other hand, Liverpool, the person who has been doing the most is Salah. And of course, the Terminator himself, Mr. Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes, uh, in the international break, he has managed to score two or three goals. He's been super impressive. So Darwin Nunes is just... Is just a guy we need Imagine, to watch. Not only Darwin. Actually, Liverpool fronts they have been training during the international. The, right, the likes of uh, Diogo, Darwin, Gakpo was also Mosala, on the Gakpo. These people are just scoring everywhere, which is a good thing to Liverpool. It's a good thing, yeah. So, Pogba, uh, quickly, let's jump into injuries. Uh, what are the injury news in the two teams? Uh, Man City, the Bruyne, the Bruyne is back in training, although not for that game. Uh, on the yeah. other side... John Stone also is away. John Stone? He will be missing the game. He's injured, oh. yeah? Injured? Yes, yes. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's not on the other side, good news. On the other side... Um, on the other side... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
on, on the other side, we we have some few guys, people like. Um, I thought Van Dyke, but Van Dyke. Simicas, no, no. Simicas is back. Um, Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson. Yeah, I think he's still the shoulder injury. He's still out. He's still out. So Andy Robertson, Stones, officially yeah. will not will be out actually. True, true to it. So, uh, uh, this is one of those matches which is even hard to even talk about because you don't know where to to attack it from. But let's do this. Uh, Pogba, when you look at the two teams, let's look at the midfield. Who do you think is more set in terms of midfield? Which midfield do you trust most? I'm talking of a Man City midfield whereby you'll get somebody like Rodri mm-hmm. at the center controlling mm-hmm. that midfield. Of course, the other injury for Man City, Kovacic. Kovacic is injured. Eh? No, so, it's not a first. Yeah, yeah, he's not, but he's out. Eh? So the, we are talking of a midfield which consists of people like Rodri, uh, people like Bernardo Silva, and of course, maybe if you want to introduce the wing and Doku, or maybe Greenish, whoever you want. Visavi Liverpool is a midfield, of course, whereby... That post of his life. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, McAllister. Uh-huh. I'll trust the Man City. Man City. Uh, if you look at the attack, uh, who are you fancying for the attack? Who do you think has the best attack? Man City or the Liverpool. Man City. Uh-huh. So, you know, for Man City and uh, Liverpool, it will be Darwin Nunes uh, and Mosala versus Alvarez and Alin Allen. Mm-hmm. So, tell us whose bet you're placing your bet on on the two attackers. Alin Allen. Alin Allen. All day long. In this one, guys, Mosala loves scoring against Man City, and uh, chances are, the odds are, he will be scoring. Uh, in this fixture, so I don't know if you're a fantasy lover, make sure you captain him because he's about to make you happy. So, uh, Ederson had an injury scare uh, during the international break. Uh, hopefully, he will make a return to the squad, but uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, so, Pogba, how do you want us to go about this? Now, having said that, uh, having talked about this, so I think let's just jump straight to our predictions. 2-2 two, two in favor of nobody. I'm going with a draw again. A draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man City are usually lethal at Etihad. Uh, they always do what they do best. But Liverpool are back defensively. And Liverpool defensively, they are back. They are trying to do what they do best. By the way, in match week 12, Liverpool won by three goals. To nil. To nil against Brentford. On the other side, in match week four, Man City leaked a lot in their defense. They conceded four goals against Chelsea, a game which resulted in 4-4. So, Kazipo. So, this is a game whereby, for some reasons, guys, I'm looking at a Liverpool win. I know it's a surprise bet, but trust you me, uh, for some reason, I'm seeing a Liverpool win. I'm giving them a 3-2 win in this fixture. Mm-hmm. Burnley playing against West Ham. Now, this match will be played at 6 PM immediately after that game will go into the Burnley against West Ham. Burnley will be at home. West Ham to continue with their impressive form, even though Bowen also got a knock. Uh, he did not participate in the international break because of a knock. Mm-hmm. That's that is why he was left in the English squad. But having said that, I feel like he might maybe make a return in the Premier League. So mm-hmm. West Ham for me, three one. Burnley still they haven't come to terms with the, the energy that you need to manifest in the Premier League. You are wearing the uh, home jersey. No, this one. West Ham, <laughs> West, it's West Ham, it's West Ham. It's West. Actually, by the way, guys, these two people just, they're almost alike, the Burnley and the West Ham jersey. Yeah. But I'll be on the West Ham side. So, Hammers, I'm going with Hammers to win this game, 3-1. 3-1, right? Luton against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, all day long, I'm going with Crystal Palace to win this game because Luton Town they play they they play they played very good against uh, Manchester United. Although Manchester United won one nil, but it could have easily ended on a draw or a Luton win if they were more clinical. So uh, this one, of course, I'm going with Crystal Palace. In match week twelve, Crystal Palace lost in a very crazy way. They crazy. actually allowed Everton to win against them, which for me was points dropped. So I feel like they are going to come back guns blazing, trying to recover the points which they lost. They have a very good goalkeeper uh, who is leading in the lead of uh, clean sheets. So let's see if they maintain that. So Crystal Palace to win this by 3-1. Newcastle against Chelsea. Now this one is another mouth-watering game. Chelsea, uh, they 
They, they had the best game I've seen so far um, this season against Man City. And to be honest, it was a Chelsea, Chelsea what to win that game, irregardless. But um, due to some reasons, it was a draw, but Chelsea were the better team against Man City. Now, how, how do you see coming into this game? Uh, it's going to be a very difficult game. Of course, Newcastle versus Chelsea has never been an easy game, especially in the recent times. Uh, the last time we met, uh, we played against Newcastle. The match resulted in a 1-1 draw. We all remember the trip here on goal. And of course, Anthony Gordon scored for them, which made it 1-1. So as we are coming to this match, it's not something which we want to overlook. Newcastle will be coming into this match wanting to rewrite the wrong way they did in match week 12 when they were playing against Bournemouth, and the world was surprised when they lost by two goals to nil. I personally never saw that coming, but it's a time for them to make uh, amends and see whether they are going to correct their mistakes. On the flip side, Chelsea are encouraged with the type of form which they are continuing to build. The team is building up. Young players are trying to gel slowly by slowly. Kuku is almost back. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, Rhys James is almost, he's, now we can say he's fully fit because uh, even in the game against uh, Man City, he started for like 60 minutes, then he was uh, rested. Uh, so this is a game which I'm actually looking for a good game. For some reasons, I feel like uh, Chelsea will be able to win it by two goals to one, though it's going to be a difficult game. Chelsea needs to prove a lot of things, especially in front of their home fans, because they have not been performing well at Stamford Bridge. So 2-1 for Chelsea. Yeah, Newcastle will be at home. Oh, Newcastle will be at home. Mm. Now that even adds or makes it interesting. Chelsea are playing very well away this uh, of late. I don't know why. And uh, But though playing in front of St. James Park is not an easy thing. Okay. Still are maintaining a 2-1 in for Chelsea. Well, St. Uh, Newcastle, they, have a, they still have a couple of injuries to start with. And uh, playing against Chelsea, Chelsea were impressive against Man City. Very impressive. I hope they continue with the same same. So I'm going with the Chelsea win 2-1. I hope they continue with the same same spirit they played against City. Nottingham Forest against Brighton. Taiwo picked up a, it's called groin, groin or what? Groin injury. Yeah. Yes, groin injury. So he won't even feature in the afternoon. The afternoon. Oh, it's a long term. Huh? It's a long term. So Nottingham. Um, I'm going with Brighton since they drew last time. I'm going with them now to win this match by at least three goals to one. Brighton have been performing too early of it. Uh, time for them to rise up. So, 2 nil for me. Sheffield against Bournemouth. Bournemouth won. Right? Yes, yes. 2 nil. 2 nil. I'm uh, against Newcastle. So, I'm expecting Bournemouth this game. Now, since they'll be at home, no, since they'll be away at Sheffield, uh, you, you don't expect these teams, these small teams, to play the way they do play against a team of their own level. So, I'm going with 1 1. Sheffield drew against Brighton. They played a very nice game. So mm. as they're going to as they're going to face Bournemouth, it's going to be a very crazy game. On the other hand, for real, guys, um, I'm I'm looking. I'm seeing a two-two draw here. Mm. The, the blades and the the who, the, the cherries. It's the going cherry. to be a very sweet game. So two-two. Another fantastic game. Brentford will be at home facing Arsenal. Now, guys. Asa, is it yeah? Arsenal they always have a bond to chew with the uh, Londoners. Uh, okay, uh, Brentford from North London. Yeah. Uh, this London so this one is a London derby. Mm -hmm. But in this London derby, um, sometimes back Brentford stole no, the VR stole uh, three points from Arsenal through Brentford. So Arsenal have something to prove against Brentford. They really really have something to prove against them. This is going to be a very interesting match, considering that Gabriel Jesus is officially back. So that means that Nketia might start from the bench. Uh, and uh, let's see how it goes. But overall, I feel like this is going to be a great fixture. Brentford will be at Brentford Community Stadium, whereas Arsenal will be the visitors. So this is a match whereby I fancy Arsenal to actually... Uh, pick up where Liverpool left because mm. Liverpool actually won by three goals against Brentford. So Arsenal should pick up from where Liverpool left and be able to win this match, especially now the 
the, the race for top three is super tight there. So you want to win to be able to catapult your opponent from the top of the table. So I'm going with Arsenal to win by 3-2. Pass against Aston Villa. Spurs have been crumbling since the Romero and uh, who? Red card. Hodgeberg. Mm, yes, yes. Since the Romero and Hodgeberg uh, injury, uh, no, red cards, these people have been, I don't know what's, what was their problem. I don't know what they, their strongholds. I don't know. But they'll be back at home facing Aston Villa. Another big, big game. Just point of correction, guys. It happens on the show. The red cards were for Romero and Odogu. 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 That guy. That guy. Uh-huh. Yes. So it is what it is. So Tottenham versus Aston Villa, it's never an easy game. It's always a very crazy game. Tottenham have a pro- point to prove, especially after losing consecutively. Their loss started with Chelsea when they lost by four goals, four goals to yeah. one. That is the game which Pogba is telling you there were two red cards. From there, they moved next to the next game again. Wolves. Wolves, which they lost by two goals to one. In fact, Wolves made a comeback. A comeback in the last minute. Huh? Mm. Yeah. So now they're going to face their bitter rivals, Aston Villa. Last season, Aston Villa beat them home and away. And uh, I feel like Tottenham has a point to prove. They mm. are born of... A bone must be chewed in this match. Yes, yes. Considering that Aston Villa are enjoying a form of their lifetime, so it's not going to be easy. So let me go with a 3-2 win for Tottenham. Uh, I'm also going with a bounce back for Tottenham. So Tottenham, let's do this. I'm going with a 2-0 victory for Tottenham. Everton against Manchester United. Now, there's a team which, if luck was a person, if luck was a team, this would be Manchester. They are playing very badly and getting results. Which is vice versa. It's vice versa because in the Champions League they're play, they're playing very well and they're not getting results. So they'd rather play not so well and get results than play so good and lose. Manchester has been winning one goal, one goal, one goal, one goal, one. They score one goal, then they defend the whole 90 minutes. They are coming to play against Everton, a team which won last time. So this one, allow me, I'll go with. One nil in favor of Manchester, but the goal will not be scored by fans, non midfielders. People like Lindelof, uh, and for your info, by the way, uh, Wan Bissaka is back in training. Rasmus Hoyland picked up a knock, but he's fine. And Luke Shaw, they call him Shaw, but Carlos is back too. So, one in favor, one nil in favor of Manchester. Hmm. This is a good game. Uh, where will the game be? It will be a good good mm. So Everton are coming into this game encouraged after a great performance against Crystal Palace where they bagged all the three points. On the other hand, Manchester United, just as Pogba has told you, uh, they are not giving you that kind of football in which you want to enjoy. But at the end of the day, as Mourinho told you, it's all about results. You bag results, who cares about how you played? So that is Manchester for you. Uh, as they're going to face Everton, it's always a rivalry, of course, when these two teams meet, uh, because especially uh, Everton and Manchester United share a good history of trading players left, right, and centre. But it is what it is. So this is a match whereby I feel like it's one of those games whereby Everton will just want to play for the books and play well. On the other side, Manchester United wants to... Even Manchester United themselves are surprised to find themselves in the position which they are currently. On the no, table. we are not surprised. So the world is surprised. So they just want to and make sure that they continue improving and going top of that table. So this is a match whereby guys I'm seeing a two two two. Two two two. Fulham against Wolves. Now this game will be played on Monday. Uh, Fulham will be at home against Wolves and uh, another now this one, the two two draw is just said will be coming in into this match. Wolves after beating Tottenham. Fulham on the other side, they will be at home at Craven Cottage. Mm. Let me just be full of praises to Fulham because at least uh, that guy, the former Wolves player, is going to meet uh, his name Jimenez. Is he's going to Mexican meet sensation. Jimenez. Jimenez is going to meet his former team. And remember, he scored his first Premier League goal. So maybe that is going to encourage him to even continue scoring goals. So I'm going with Fulham. Fulham to win this by 2 1. All I'm doing. So, actually, thank you guys. That has been Game Week 13 for you. Thank you. Until we meet again, keep it the Gatekeepers TV. We are available on all podcast platforms and across all social media platforms. Remember to subscribe and share our content across all platforms that you can afford to get yourself in.